Hello and welcome to part three of our video series uh, covering the Fisher esterification. And in this video, we're going to talk about the um, equilibrium of the Fisher esterification, how that's problematic, but how we can um, you know, cheat the system, so to speak, and, and get, get products even though uh, thermodynamics tells us we're not allowed to. Um, okay, so let's kind of review the Fisher esterification here. So in a, a Fisher esterification, we have a carboxylic acid, and that's going to react with an alcohol to form an ester. plus water, okay. Now our problem with this reaction is that the equilibrium constant is about equal to three. So it's close to one. Now, if the equilibrium constant were exactly one, uh, what the, would that mean? What that would mean is that once the reaction reaches equilibrium, you could have a 50-50 mixture of reactants and products. The problem with that is we typically are not looking as organic chemists to have 50% yields of products. We would like to see 90% yields of things like that. Okay, so an equilibrium constant of three uh, is a little bit better, but it's still not the, the high yield that we might like to see. Okay, so the question is, is there anything we can do about this? So luckily for us, there is. Uh, you may recall from um, general chemistry, uh, when you were learning about chemical equilibrium and chemical kinetics, maybe in uh, second semester general chemistry, uh, there was this principle known as Le Chatelier's principle. And probably in its most general and simplest form, uh, Le Chatelier's principle would say that when you apply a stress to the system, some sort of system, in this case a chemical equilibrium, the system will take measures to kind of counteract that stress, okay? And so here's how we can kind of apply that. It's like we've got a, a trick up our sleeve here. Okay, so let's say, usually with this reaction, we're trying to get an ester, we're trying to get products. So we're trying to shift this particular equilibrium to the right, okay? And, um, so if we shift to the right, there's things we can do. So we can either add excess of one of our products or we could remove one of our reactants. Okay, so that would be the stress we're applying to the system. And then the system would compensate by having more of the reactants go to form products, which is what we want to have happen. Okay, so some precise things we could do to shift the equilibrium to the right. We could add more of the carboxylic acid, so RCO2H. We could have an excess of that, okay, relative to the alcohol. We could add excess or more of the alcohol. And this is probably one of the more common things that's done for a, a Fischer esterification. People will actually use the alcohol as, as a solvent. Okay, so when something's a solvent and it's a reactant, then it's really in excess. We're talking, I don't know, maybe 60, 60 times as much of this as this on a molar ratio, or 100 times. So it depends how much sulfate you add. Okay. Uh, the third thing that's commonly done is we could remove one of these. Okay, so we could, uh, we could remove the ester. And so this might be done... Uh, uh oh, I'm running out of room <laughs> via a distillation. Okay, so perhaps this ester has a higher boiling point uh, than these, and we could remove it by, by distillation. All right, and then uh, the other thing we could do to remove, uh, shift this to the right, is we could uh, remove water. Okay, so again, we're removing one of the products. All right. 
Um, now, sometimes we might want to shift to the left. Okay. So here, uh, we could either remove what's on this side, or we, we could add excess of what's on that side. So we could add excess. We could dump in more water. Okay, and that's probably what you're most likely to do. If you want to hydrolyze an ester, if you want to make it go from the ester back to the carboxylic acid or the um, alcohol, you're probably just going to dump in a bunch of water into your ester and then, I forgot we have an acid in here. Okay, and probably some, um, some acid, tosic acid or, or sulfuric acid. Okay. Uh, theoretically, we could add excess of the ester, but usually the ester is uh, more expensive than water. Okay. Um, or we could potentially remove the acid or, or remove the alcohol. But usually you're going to add excess water if you're trying to hydrolyze an ester. All right. So uh, that concludes our uh, part three of the Fisher esterification. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this. Now, one other thing I want to say, right and left refer to the context of what I've drawn here, where the carboxylic acid and alcohol are on the left and the ester and water on the right. You could also switch these, have the water and ester on the right, and then you'd have to switch these. So anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.